Hi, I'm Brian Hefty, a farmer, agronomist, and a co-host of Ag PhD TV and Radio. Here's some basic information about drain tile that's installed on farms today. Most tile, like you see here, is made from plastic. A good portion of that is often recycled plastic. Tile will be either perforated, so it can take in water, or non-perforated, so it simply carries water without any additional water entering the tile. Tile usually comes in rolls like these. It's picked up and laid on top of fields with a stringer cart. It's then trenched or plowed into the ground. While tile is still put in by custom operators, thanks to modern technology, farmers can now accurately and effectively install tile themselves on their farms. With systems like this Gold Digger Tile Plow and IntelliSlope Guidance System, a farmer can install tile from 3 inches up to 10 inches in diameter. We use almost all 4 inch and 6 inch tile on our farm. The farmer simply drives the path he wants to tile and the computer figures out the best depth and slope for the tile. Then the farmer backs up to where his outlet is and pulls the tile in. The computer uses the Global Positioning System, an RTK Ground Correction System, and a slope sensor so the installation is always done correctly. In order to install lateral lines, he will then use a backhoe to dig out where the laterals connect to the main line. The main line is then cut, a T is added to the line, and the lateral is then installed with the plow in the same fashion as the main line. Farmers with very flat ground, and especially in wetter areas of the country, will put tile lines every 40 to 70 feet apart in their fields called pattern tiling. In much of eastern South Dakota, most tile lines are simply placed on each side of waterways or draws. On the GPS maps that are generated by our tiling computer software and overlaid on Google Earth satellite maps, you can see that most of the lines on our farm aren't very long and are often just in these lower spots in fields. Most tile is installed three to four feet deep. Because of this relatively shallow depth, it often freezes up in the winter. In 2009, for example, the tile lines on our farm never ran until early May when the frost fully went out of the ground. In other words, if you're concerned about tile adding to spring flooding, the odds of that happening are slim to none. In fact, flooding problems are typically reduced when tile is installed because excess moisture is removed from the soil in the summer and fall when water levels in rivers are lower. Then when spring rains or snow melt occurs, the soil is able to absorb more water than ground that was fully saturated just before freeze up in the fall. In Agronomy 101 classes, we have always been taught that the best and most productive soils contain about 25% air, 25% water, and 50% actual soil. The issue that farmers deal with in almost every field, though, is areas that stay too saturated too long. Once soils become fully saturated for more than just a few hours, soil life begins to die, plant nutrients are less available, and plant roots suffer. If soils remain fully saturated for days on end, moisture will begin to leave the field from evaporation. When water evaporates, it leaves behind salt. As salt levels continue to build, soil pH increases as well, and high salt and high soil pH levels reduce future crop growth even more. Eventually, poor drainage leads to dead, white spots in fields like you see across the state of South Dakota. Conversely, if tile is properly installed, once the water table in the field rises above the level of the tile, that excess water will drain out, meaning crop growth is improved, yields are greater, more food is produced for the world, and income for the farmer and the community is improved as well. While yield increases vary, on our farm we typically gain 10 to 25 percent from tiling. At most, 25% of our farm needs tile installed, but if we gain even 10% on those acres, we're talking about a gross income increase there of $40 to $60 per acre. In terms of documented university studies, there are two main points to note. First, soil erosion is reduced when tile is properly installed. We often reference Botcher in 1981, Skaggs in 82, and Istock and Killing in 83. These studies, and many more, show that soil erosion decreases, often dramatically, thanks to tiling. Second, peak water flows are reduced when tile is added to a watershed. Zucker and Brown in 1998 found a 15 to 30 percent reduction in peak water flow with little to no change in the total annual water flow from the watershed. The reason is easy to understand. If excess water is removed, when it rains, the soil can absorb more water. Plus, over time, you actually will see a slight reduction in water leaving the watershed because if crop growth is improved from tiling, more water is used by crops in each field. 
The other concern many people have with tile is that it will somehow pollute our waters. This is categorically untrue. Here's why water pollution is less likely to occur when tile is installed correctly. If soil is 100% saturated and a rain hits, where's that rain forced to go? Well, it has to run off if the soil can't hold it. When it runs off, it could potentially carry soil, chemical, and fertilizer along with it. If tile is properly installed and excess water is removed, the soil can now absorb that rainfall and do the job it is intended to do, which is filter that water. By the time the water flows slowly through three to four feet of soil to reach the tile, if there is so much water that it is in excess, most soil, chemical, and fertilizer will be filtered out, meaning that clean water leaves the tile. Here's a water quality sample from a tile line on our farm showing that all the specs are actually within drinking water standards. When you look at the fertilizer aspect of this issue a little more, phosphorus is actually the number one issue in rivers, lakes, and streams as it is the limiting factor for algae growth. In other words, add more phosphorus and algae blooms grow. Phosphorus, however, is virtually immobile in soils. The only way it can ever get into a body of water is if the soil that holds it also moves into the water. Obviously, when erosion is reduced by tiling, phosphorus movement is reduced as well. In summary, tiling is a great thing for the environment when done correctly. It reduces erosion and peak water flows in a watershed. It helps improve soil life, crop growth, yields, and income for farmers and their communities. As farmers, we are charged with being good stewards of the land. In my humble opinion, by properly installing drain tile, we are taking a step toward meeting that goal.